Hi, my name is Dr. Omat Shah. I'm the Holistic Fertility Specialist. And today I want to clarify something uh, which a lot of women think that is possible, which is they think that if they're menstruating, they're automatically ovulating. And that's actually not true. You can have something called an anovulatory cycle, which means you did not ovulate during that cycle. Now, one of the things that you should know is actually women can have this naturally um, happen at certain points in their cycle. So um, throughout the course of your life, you're going to have a few cycles here and there where you don't ovulate, and that's completely normal. Uh, but where it's not normal is if you're trying to get pregnant and you're having difficulty and um, you're not ovulating. So there's an importance of figuring out, one, understanding why this happens, and two, really being able to do something about it. So why this happens? <laughs> um, a lot of women have this idea that if they menstruated, it means they ovulated. And um, I can see why one might think that, because um, maybe you think that um, if you started your cycle on time and you got your period on time, that totally means that you had an ovulation. Uh, however, we know for, for a fact that this isn't always true. And um, what's actually happening is estrogen is uh, signaling the, the building up of the lining of the uterus, right? And menses is essentially the shedding of that lining. So you can build up the lining of the uterus and you can have the signal to shed that uter uterine lining without actually having ovulation. So the ovulation is really independent in a lot of ways of menstruation. And um, this happens in reverse when a lot of women are thinking, oh, I'm not having a menstrual cycle, so I'm not ovulating. And yet we know that there are cases where uh, women get pregnant while breastfeeding while not having a menstrual cycle. So they had to have ovulated in order to get pregnant. And um, that basically happened in reverse. So basically um, you can have uh, menses and ovulation and think of them as two separate things. They are interconnected and there's a lot of hormones that go into play in their interconnection. But if you think of them separately and independently, then you'll have a better sense of what's happening throughout your cycle. So uh, we should have menstruation. The start of menstruation actually um, is the starting of the signal of the follicle stimulating hormone, which is um, you're going to start producing the follicle that will eventually be released, right? So if you have that FSH signal, that is signaling the follicle to develop, and eventually the luteinizing hormone, which is LH, will signal the release of that um, developing follicle out of the ovary, which is actual ovulation. Um, and then if you have a normal ovulation, your progesterone will spike in the second half of your cycle. Um, and you'll usually see that if you're measuring your basal body temperatures, you'll see it as a spike in your temperature. Um, and then the progesterone will stay high, theoretically, ideally. <laughs> um, the progesterone will stay high for, um, at least 10 days, ideally 14 days, um, maybe a little bit more, and then the progesterone will drop off. And that drop off is usually the dropping off of progesterone, which stimulates the shedding of the uterine lining. Now, you can kind of get that um, shedding of the lining, like I said, without the drop off of the progesterone, because the estradiol, as we said, is kind of mimicking the progesterone pattern, not quite the same way, but when the estradiol kind of bottoms out, you will also stimulate a cycle. It will be the shedding of that uterine lining. So ideally, those two are interconnected and they're flowing together and working together, but it's not always happening that way. So it's really important to one, if you're tracking your cycles, to have a sense of is there that 
um, kind of steady lower temperature in the first half of your cycle and the steady higher temperature after the spike in the second half of your cycle. And if that's not happening, there's usually something going on with the hormones and my advice is always to get the hormones tested so you know exactly where they fall and, and you can see if there's something that needs to be done about them. Um, and then the second part is just understanding that that um, your menstrual cycle doesn't mean that you ovulated that month. So you do, you do need to have some sort of tracking for your ovulation. There's ovulation predictor kits. I'm not a huge fan. I think that the temperatures work better, but to each its own. If you like the ovulation predictor kits, you can totally use those. Um, but at the end of the day, we want to know and we want to make sure that if you're trying to get pregnant, we know exactly when you're ovulating. And um, that will be best suited for um, knowing that you ovulated in that cycle. So never assume that you're ovulating um, just because you're having a menstrual cycle. And like I threw in there a, a little bit ago, um, also be aware that you can get pregnant even if you're not menstruating. Um, because women have those moments where they're breastfeeding and and um, they're not actually having a menstrual cycle, but they are ovulating. So be careful if you're trying not to get pregnant um, while breastfeeding. That's something to be aware of. Of um, but also just take a take a look at your cycle and kind of get a sense of um, is ovulation happening and view it independently of the menses. All right, so with that, I'm Dr. Omatma. If you have any questions, um, feel free to type them in below and we'll be looking at this um, feed and kind of answering and responding to questions as we go. So hope you have a blessed day and I'll talk to you next time.